All right, so as I said, we're going to talk about data. So first of all, we collect data, and it can be all different things. Um, so say you might be collecting, you might count how many um, pets someone, everybody has in their household. So what that's the data we're collecting. But what we like to do is we like to categorize it and we like to put them, class what type of data it is. So the first two big options that we can have is that the data can be either numerical or it could be categorical. Okay, so for example, numerical would be if I say measured everybody's height in the class, so I had their height, that would be a numerical data. If I asked everybody what type of pet they had, um, I like say whether they had a dog, cat, bird or something, that would be a categorical data collection. Okay, now these two, um, set, these two data groups, numerical and categorical, they break off into two other groups as well. So we can have two types of numerical d data. We can have discrete and we can have um, continuous. Okay, so let me, a good um, way to know which is which. Discrete means you counted it and generally continue means you measured it. So, like I said before, when I said, oh, if I measured your heights, that would be a case of continuous data. It's numerical and it's continuous, all right? And so, same with maybe weights and things that you measure, that's continuous. Counted could be, um, like, uh, could be anything. Say, um, if you said the cars in the street you counted out how many cars in the street or things like that um i don't know whatever who can think of something you might count up um it may be you know amount of money in an everyone sorry what did someone say sheep, sheep. <laughs> number of sheep okay fair enough that would be counted and that's it that's good so they're the two types. So you're gonna have some questions where you're gonna ask, they're gonna ask you what type of data. They might just originally just ask for the first group and then they might ask you to be more um, exact and ask you which of the short, smaller groups it is. All right, so when we have categorical data, we have two groups and one's called ordinal and one's called nominal. Okay, so the order, ordinal one is easy. It's the one that has some type of order. So say when you categorize, um, you might be looking at people's houses and you might just class them whether they were small, medium and large. So it's still a category. Say if you had a small house, that's a category, you're putting it into a category and median. But because we know that there's um, some order there, the large one is the bigger than the median, so then we call that ordinal. Another one could be, um, when you have ordinal, is say um, shoe size. So when we say we're a size six or seven and an eight, it's actually a category. They haven't really measured that size they're calling it a size six because of just um they're putting it in a category okay so but because we know a size eight is bigger than a size six that's sort of ordinal data maybe today when you write out um your questions you might want to put some more examples under this little flow chart um so that they make sense for you now nominal it's just something that doesn't have an order. So say like you could say if we went and asked everyone um, what type of car their parents drove. So um, you've got if you have a BMW, you know, I don't know, a Mazda or whatever, 
that type of car there's no order to it it's just a category so that becomes just nominal so type of car maybe um you know say food type that you had for breakfast or something like that that would be a nominal thing all right so today you boys will be doing um expanding but when we have double brackets so when we have um two sets of brackets everything that's in the first bracket has to be multiplied with the second bracket um sometimes they refer to this as the foil method it doesn't matter just um follow the steps so what we've got to do is first of all i like to take the first term and i'm going to multiply it by that and that so i know that i'm covering it so when we have a times a what does that give us isaac not there james caputo a squared, a squared good thank you and what would a times three b Three A. Yeah, so plus 3A, good. So then the next bit, now I've done that, I'm going to multiply this with um, the two things on the in the other brackets. So if I have um, 2 times A, that would give me 2A. And then if I have 2 times 3, that gives me plus 6. So this is what you would get. Now if you follow the way I just did it then, you'll find that the like terms are in the middle and it can make it easier because we can now just write our answer out because 3a plus 2a can be 5a and plus 6. So there's our expanded brackets. All right, I'm going to get Daniel Marucci to help me do this next one up here. So first of all, I'm going to do x times x and then x times 3. What would that be, Daniel? x times x, x yeah no it's x squared when you're yeah and then x times three x squared x times three that will be b three x yep beautiful and now do pardon uh i'm back sorry miss yeah. Um, what's it called? Wouldn't it equal? Uh, yeah, I'm confused to be uh, Who who's uh, but, uh, yeah. who's that talking, Daniel? Yeah, that's all right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. All right. So we've done. We did, we're taking the first bracket and we're timesing everything in the second bracket. So we did x times x here, and then which was x squared, and then x times three, which is three x. Now I'm going to do four times x, which is four x. And then 4 times 3, which is 12. So if we do it like this, we've got our like terms in the middle. So I can just tidy that up and say x squared plus 7x plus 12. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to go on to the next one. Let's go. So we're going to expand now. Now we've, just got, to be, we've got a bit bigger numbers and it doesn't matter. So the first thing I'm going to do is 2 times a, which is 2a squared and then 2a times 2, which would be 4a. Then I'll do 3 times a, which is 3a, and then 3 times 2, which is 6. These are the like terms. So I've got 7a in the middle, plus 6, and there's our answer. So just be careful when you've got the numbers, make sure you're still accounting them. So 3m times m, 3m squared, 3m times 2, would be 6m, then 1 times m, m, then 1 times 2 is 2. These guys are like terms, so 3m squared plus 7m plus 2. All good? Beautiful. And the next ones? So the only like the difference here is that the letters are different, but it doesn't matter, just do the same. So we go x times z, which it just becomes xz and then x times one plus x, then y times z, which is yz, and then y times one, which is y. Now, none of these are like terms, so I just have to leave it like that, okay? Um, the next one, p times r would be pr, p times three would be three p, then q times r, q 
qr, but then q times 3 is plus 3q. Now, there's no like terms again here, so that's got to be my answer like that.